Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is January the 2nd in the year of our Lord, 2018, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, I felt it necessary, being the beginning of the year and time to take priority of our lives to consider where we are in the Lord, that we take a look at a passage that has been speaking to me for several months now. Now, before we jump into this passage, let me say I'm not trying to be critical or judgmental against anyone at all. But it's obvious from reading the Bible, specifically the New Testament, that there are stages of our growth. And we know this from passages such as 1 John chapter 2 and verse 13, when John says, I write unto you fathers, those who have not only been in the faith for some time, but are growing in the faith, growing in their knowledge of the Lord Jesus. He says later in the verse, I write unto you young men. Then last he says, I write unto you little children. And so this specifies that there are stages of maturity in our Christian journey. And of course, as in this life, we begin our spiritual lives as babes in Christ. We then become children from their young men and from their fathers. And so as we examine our lives and we take inventory of where we are in the Lord, it's important that we signify the differences in what separates a child from a father, a father from a young man, so that we can see where we are, so that we may know the goal set before us and what we are to achieve. And so I want us to take a look at the book of Titus, which is a small but powerful book containing three chapters. And I want us to begin in chapter one, verse seven. Now we are told a bishop must be blameless. And what Paul is doing is he's writing a letter to young Titus, giving him a mission to go into these cities, establish churches, and choose and select who will be the shepherds, the pastors, or as it says in this verse, the bishops of these churches, of these home fellowships. And so we know that in order for Titus to select these men, he's going to choose men that are aged in the faith, not necessarily in time as we look at it. In other words, how long they've been in the faith, but men who are growing in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus, in their obedience to what the Lord has commanded them, in the inner workings of the Spirit in their life, and producing the fruit that ultimately shows growth in the Lord Jesus. And so he says a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed. Now in the Greek, that word self-willed means arrogant, wanting all the light to shine upon himself, wanting to be in control and serve as a dictator over others. No, he is not to be self-willed, He's not to be angry. He's not to be given to wine. He's not to be a striker, or the Greek would indicate they're quarrelsome, argumentative, or debateful. And he's certainly not given to filthy lucre, which is corrupt gain. Speaking of monetary gain. Now, as we look at these verses, I want, I want us to see them like we would see a sponge that is full of water. And it is our goal to wring that sponge dry or to draw out everything we can from these passages. And so let's flip the verse for just a moment in recognizing that there are stages of growth so that we can see exactly where we stand in the Lord. And let us read it like this. A babe in Christ is not blameless. He is self-willed, self-seeking, self-centered, more concerned about himself than he is others. He's easily angered. He gives himself to wine. He is quarrelsome, debateful, argumentative, and what drives him most seems to be the desire for money. His passion in life is not serving others. 
He is not a lover of good men, but he is jealous of them. He is bitter about them. He is envious of them. A babe in Christ is not sober. In the Greek, this means self-controlled. He is not just in all his affairs or impartial. He is not holy and he is not temperate, which simply means he is easily provoked. He does not hold fast the faithful word as he has been taught so that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers, those who mock the message. In chapter 2, verse 2, it continues by saying that the aged men, the fathers, should be sober or self-controlled. They should be grave, which means honorable, respected. They should be temperate, which again is not easily provoked. They should be sound in faith. The word sound there in the Greek simply means not lacking. So they should not be lacking in faith, in charity, in acts of love and good deeds toward others, and in patience. Well, verse 6 will now speak about the young men. And remember, in 1 John, it spoke about the fathers, about the young men, and about the children. And of the young men, it says, they too should be sober. And here, this word in the Greek seems to imply not only are they to be sober or in control of themselves, but their minds should be unaltered. And this would seem to be in reference to not given to much wine. In all things, they should show themselves a pattern of good works. In doctrine and biblical teaching, showing uncorruptness. Gravity, which is again honor or respect, and sincerity. They should be of sound speech, speech that cannot be condemned by others, so that they would have nothing negative to say about you. These young men, these fathers, these who are maturing in the faith, in verse 12, should be denying ungodliness and worldly lusts. They should be living soberly or moderately, righteously and godly in this present world. And they do this because they're looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so basically what this is saying is they are living every day as if it were their last day. Their mind is upon the immediate sudden return of the Lord Jesus. And so they're living as faithfully for him as they possibly can. In chapter 3, verse 1, it says they are subject to principalities and powers. They obey magistrates and they are ready to every good work. They speak evil of no man. They speak nothing negative about anyone. They are not brawlers or fighters, but they are gentle in their character, showing all meekness unto all men. And finally, in verse 9, they avoid foolish questions. Now stop and think about that for a moment. How many things do we debate over and do we argue about that are simply foolish questions? How many foolish questions do we entertain that have nothing to do with our daily walk with the Lord Jesus? Well, those who are maturing in Christ reject these things. They don't get caught up in genealogies which simply means lineages or bloodlines. They're not contentious or argumentative. They're not striving about the law. For these things they know to be unprofitable and vain. They have nothing to do with our daily walk. You see, if we back up to chapter 3, verse 3, it says there was a time in our lives where we were foolish, where we did exhibit the characteristics of children, Myself, you, and others that you know. All of us have to start somewhere and all of us have to go through these stages. When I was a child, I behaved as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. But as a child, we were foolish. We were disobedient. We were deceived. We gave in to different types of lusts and pleasures that this world had to offer. We lived our lives in malice, which simply means wickedness, envy, jealousy, bitterness. We were hateful, and we hated others. 
But as we gave ourselves over to the Spirit of God to allow him to do his work within us, we began to mature in the Lord Jesus and produce the fruit that is necessary as we mature as his children. And so friends, as we move into this new year and you take inventory of your life, you determine whether you're a babe, whether you're a young man, whether you're a father, I want to encourage you not to spend unnecessary time beating yourself up because you can't change the past. You can only learn from it, but you can change the future. So as we enter into 2018, make this the year where you're going to see profound changes in your Christian growth. Now you may say, well, Pastor Don, how do I do that? Well, if you keep doing the same things that you have been doing, then you're going to keep getting the same results. So if you want something different, you have to do something different. And I can assure you, friends, the greatest hindrance to your Christian growth is your neglect of the Word of God. If you'll simply make the reading of the Word of God a priority in your life each and every day, you will watch yourself grow to the point where you may consider that you are outgrowing yourself. Now, you may want to pause the video here and stop and contemplate that. How do you outgrow yourself? But I assure you, the more time you spend in the Word of God, the faster you will grow. Now, you may be saying, well, wait a minute, Pastor. You said nothing about obeying the Word of God. You simply emphasized reading the Word of God. And you are correct. The reason I did that is simply because if you make reading the Word of God a priority in your life each and every day, the convicting power of the Holy Spirit will set upon you in such a way that you will either obey what you're reading or you will quit reading the Word of God altogether because your conscience will not be able to bear the load of the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. And so quite frankly, it's put this simple, friends. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired and you want to grow in the Lord, then give yourself to the reading of God's Word. You can't read too much, but you can read too little. It's like a farmer. If he only plants a few seeds, he's only going to get a few produce. The more he plants, the more the return will be. And so as we move into this new year, I truly hope, I truly pray that your one desire is to spend more time in the Word of God. If that means turning off the TV, turn off the TV. If that means shutting out your friends and family, then shut them out. If that means putting your cell phone in your car and sitting inside your house and reading, then do it. But don't let anything get in the way of that one goal, of that one priority, because it is the most important aspect in your Christian growth. If you want more of Jesus, if you want more of his spirit in your life, then you must give more of yourselves unto the things of the kingdom and less unto the things of this world. And so if, as we read these passages this morning, and you identified with many of the traits and characteristics that characterize that of a child in the faith, that's okay because now you know what needs to be worked on, what needs to be corrected, and what goals you need to set out to attain in your Christian journey. Well, I love you, friends. I, I trust that this has been uplifting to you. It's not been my intention to leave you feeling beaten down. But I want you to look with great hope and anticipation on what the Lord wants you to become, where he wants to take you, and to see it as a great adventure, and to understand that it begins with the reading of his word. Well, tomorrow we'll be back with another study from our journey through the story of the Bible, and then we'll continue our regular schedule in our book study through the New Testament, which we are currently in the book of Romans. Until then, and as the Lord wills, may your journey be blessed and full of joy, and I'll see you on the next video.